In this module, we're going to talk about the job of deciding. And this includes how do we prioritize and batch tasks? How long should our iterations be? And what should we include in them? What stories are high priority and should be included in, in a given iteration? How do we decide that? And then on a day-to-day -day basis, we do these daily stand-ups where everybody comes and says, yesterday I did this, today I'm going to shoot to do this, and these are the things that are impeding my progress. Well, how do we make that work, and how do we overall achieve that pinnacle of practice of Agile where the team is self-organizing, they're helping each other get things done, they're doing the right things to help the team overall achieve a valuable outcome for the iteration? How do we manage work in progress? So how do we make sure that we don't deluge a whole bunch of stuff, for instance, to testing at the very last minute where they're struggling and then idle in the beginning part and, and instead have a more continuous flow of things moving across the implementation and all the different steps that we define for ourselves that get us to working software. How do we batch up our releases? We've talked about how at the end of an iteration you have a potentially shippable feature, meaning that we could ship this, it's working the way that we want, we would be ready to ship it if we wanted to, but that you might, you might, for instance, do two-week iterations and then releases every 60 days. So you package up roughly you know, something like four iterations worth of content into a given release. And that's, that's relatively normal. Or you may release a lot. It's everything else being equal, it's better to release more. But anyway, this job is about figuring out what you're going to put in the release and how often you're going to do it. Success here looks like there is a minimum of hedging and blaming. So the high functioning team is decisive and yet they understand that they will never make the perfect decision, but they'll make smart decisions that overall allow them to get to a good outcome. There are relatively few interruptions so, and surprises. So in the middle of an iteration, the team has the confidence that they're safe, they know what they're supposed to be focused on and now the job of deciding, you know, at least the, the bigger picture of what they're going to do in that iteration is done. They can focus on their job. How do they build good software? How do they test it? The team's productivity is balanced. So this kind of has to do with the um, work in progress job here and this other job of sharing and batching out tasks. So we don't just have one superstar charging through and doing a great job. We're able to do things in a way where the whole team performs better and gets better over time. And we have a fast turnaround from idea to execution. So when we have ideas, we know how to prioritize them, batch them up, and get them out there to the market so we can see if this new idea about what's going to be valuable to the customer is right. Because as we discussed at the very beginning of the learning module, the most productive, most profitable product teams are out there observing the customer, they know that the product, every solution is temporary and they need to constantly learn how to make things better for the user. And then we're maximizing RVA time. And if you remember, that stands for real value added time. So deciding and the overhead of figuring out what you're going to work on and creating system inputs or documentation to figure that out, that's all BVA time, business value added time, things you've got to do to manage the business, but they don't directly pay off to things that are going to benefit the customer. So we acknowledge that this BVA time is going to exist, but we try to minimize it. And we try to eliminate non-value added time. So this is, for instance, time where the testers have absolutely nothing to test and they're idle and then all of a sudden they're super busy and then there's a whole bunch of kerfuffle and back and forth where there's misunderstandings and waste generated that's just one example, but NVA time is time wasted due to faulty processes, mistakes, things like that. Eliminating NVA time um, you know, to zero isn't realistic, but you want to drive, you want to make it your goal to eliminate it in a high-functioning team. So those are the jobs of deciding, at least as we're defining them here for the course, and those are the things that you're going to learn how to do better using Agile over the rest of the videos here.